So this is the second strategy. We've already covered doubles before we get to this one. And this now multiplying by 10 is the next easiest strategy. I want to deal with um, a recommendation early on, and that is that we don't say to students, just add a zero. So when we're multiplying a number like 4 by 10, don't say add a zero. For a start, we're not adding zero. If you add zero, obviously you get the same number you started with. And it's not just a matter of writing a zero at the end of the number, making it bigger. Simply because when we handle other numbers later on, and the students learn about decimal fractions, if they were asked, asked to multiply a number like 2.5 by 10, if they simply wrote a zero on the end, some of them will think that's multiplying by 10. But of course it's not, and it hasn't changed the number at all. Whereas with this number it does, or at least visually it appears to. So rather than that, my recommendation is that you talk about the values and the places um, to help the students understand what's going on. So we're starting with four. So here we have four ones. Now if I had magnetic base 10 blocks today, I would have used them, but I don't. So I've drawn some pictures on the, the board instead. Here are four ones. What will we have students if we multiply this by 10? We'll have four tens or 10 lots of four or however we want to put that. And that will look like this. And the students can do that with their own blocks or own um, base 10 material. How would we write that? Well, we put a 4 for the 4 blocks, and then we won't have any 10s at all, so we'll have 0. Sorry, we won't have any 1s in the 1s place, so there'll be a 0 in the 1s place. So they'll understand why the 0 is there, and they'll see why the 4 is the same as the 4 that was there, and so on. All right, let's just look at the names for the multiples of 10. Um, this whole strategy, by the way, will uh, match very closely students' study of numbers and study of place value, and we call this a place value strategy. So this doesn't have to be just a number fact strategy lesson. When you're teaching this, it's um, bundled up, if you like, with place value understanding as well. And there are some tricky aspects to this. There's some inconsistencies. And of course, I'm sure you recognize what they are. These examples here, 20, 30, and 50, don't reinforce the connection between the name for the number of ones and the name for the number of tens. When we're dealing with four, as an example, we're going to be talking a lot about four. We have four blocks. We write a four. This is the symbol for four. So we're repeating that. How many tens do we have? Well, we have four tens. So I put four tens in the tens column. And again, we're using that language to reinforce it. We can almost cheat a little bit here and abbreviate that with the symbol for four and then a capital T to stand for tens. And we can you know, make two digit numbers using this abbreviation. And then we can talk about what we call that. And of course we call it 4T, which looks a lot like four and the T is for tens. Now, I hasten to add, there's no trick here there's no sort of teacher's sleight of hand to make it look like there's a connection when really there isn't. There really is a connection. It's not an accident that this name for four tens is 40. It's got a, the word four in it. Uh, the only difference, of course, is the U is missing, and we'll cover that when we get students writing it down. But early on in the discussion, the verbal oral discussion, um, we don't even need to mention it because it sounds you know, sounds like there's a connection as there is. Same as 60, 70, 80, and 90. So in introducing the strategy, of, in talking about the place value concepts, I would start with one of those examples, not 20, 30, or 50, because they don't sound like the single digit name. To reinforce that point, what I've done with my own students is almost like a joke to talk about what it would be, what the names of the tens would be, if we were consistent. So instead of having 20, we would then have 2t. And instead of 30, we'd have 3t. So we would have 2t, 3t, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. And you can hear as I just say that, some of them actually are correct. The 6, 7, 8, and 9t, you know, there's, they're entirely consistent. Um, so then we just need to apply extra attention to the 20, 30, and 50, help the students remember that those are special cases and they have to take particular care with them.